We all want to practice that wave one more time? This is a happy day. Woo! Outstanding, outstanding. Good morning, everyone. On behalf of the State Fire Marshal, Peter Ostrowski, Marshal Peter Ostrowski, and the men and women of the Department of Fire Services, welcome to the commencement exercises for the 272nd class, graduating class of the Massachusetts Firefighting Academy's Career Recruit Firefighter Training Program. At this time, I ask you to please join me in welcoming our presiding officer for today's ceremony, State Fire Marshal Peter Ostrowski, accompanied by the official party. Please join me as we now welcome the Chiefs of the Department for today's graduating recruits. You good, Mr. McPhail? Excellent. Ladies and gentlemen, please rise for the entrance of Class 272 and the posting of the national and state colors. Yes, I've already spoken to him. Handsome bunch, handsome bunch. Class 272 was led in by bagpiper Joseph Mazzola of the Framingham Fire Department, as well as the Worcester Pipes and Drums. Thank you, Joe. If you could remain standing for our national anthem, which will be performed by Miss Monica Hatch. Whose 
whose broad stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight are the ramparts we watched were so gallantly streaming and the rocket red glare the bombs bursting in gave proof through the night that our flag was still there oh say does that star spangled banner yet wave o'er the land of the free and the home of the brave? Outstanding, outstanding. Please remain standing for our invocation, delivered by Chaplain, Chaplain Eric Greer. Let's pray. Our good and gracious God, we gather here today to celebrate the efforts and achievement of these fine men and women, and we offer our thanks for all of those who have gone before us in the fire service, for those who have shared important lessons and wisdom we're thankful for each one who served as a mentor to these recruits. We thank you for these graduates, for their energy, their enthusiasm, and the hard work that they have put into this training. May you continue to bless them as they go from here to work and to serve in their communities. We pray this in your holy name. Amen. Please be seated. Good morning again. My name is Dennis Ball, and I have the honor and the absolute privilege of being the coordinator of the recruit programs at the Massachusetts Fire Academy, and I'll be your master of ceremonies today. And some on this stage may, say, may think the master of disaster, all right, but we'll try to get it through. I'd like to uh, introduce you officially to the official uh, stage party. So on my immediate right, right the left, is uh, State Fire Marshal Mr. Peter Ostrowski. To the marshal's left, representing the third district, is the third district vice president of the IAFF, Mr. Jay Colbert. <laughs> Next to uh, Mr. Colbert is our keynote speaker today, Assistant Chief William Sullivan of the Malden Fire Department. <laughs> representing the Kingston Fire Department as their chaplain, as well as the Massachusetts. Uh, Corps of Fire Chaplains, we just met, Mr. Eric Greer. Chaplain. <laughs> to Mr. Greer's left, one of the founding members of the recruit, pro, uh, recruit training programs at the Massachusetts Firefighter Academy, uh, recruit program assistant coordinator, Mr. Jack Delinas. <laughs> and lastly, next to Mr. Delinas, is a senior fire instructor, as well as an acting uh, uh, assistant coordinator, and he, much better than I am, and he's up here because of his mustache, because it looks so cool, <laughs> Mr. Michael Moriarty. <laughs> just quickly, I'd just like to thank all the instructors and the support staff. Each, of, each and every one of you are the back, backbone of the recruit program. Uh, most of the, the instructors and support staff here are active members. Um, within their departments. And being a member here serves two purposes. One, it gives them the opportunity to give back, but also it also gives us, them, the opportunity to learn from one another. We, we become a much stronger, stronger instructor staff and support staff. We go back to our communities much, much stronger because we learn from ourselves, uh, each other every day. So thank you, thank you for your professionalism, your dedication, and your true passion, your absolute true passion for the fire service in your communities. Thank you so much. <laughs> and lastly, I'd just like a, qu a quick uh, thank you to my support staff who are truly, truly the fuel that powers the engine. They're the, the behind-the-scenes folks. Um, without, without, without their assistance, 
um, it, it can't work. Or, or it works much, much more difficult. So the young ladies that were passing out the brochures today, Ms. Christine Dancero, Ms. Kyler uh, McKenzie, and I'd like to see uh, Ms. Uh, Christina Mitchell as well, who was uh, filming uh, this Facebook, what, live? Or, oh, was streaming it live? I have a flip phone, so I have no idea <laughs> what this Facebook stuff's about, okay? So th thank you for what you do, all right? Thank you. At this time, it is my absolute pleasure to introduce State Fire Marshal Peter Ostrowski. Good morning, everyone. Thank you for joining us and for letting me be part of today's celebration as we graduate recruit class 272. It's a very exciting day for all of us here at the department. And on behalf of the men and women of the Department of Fire Services, I extend a welcome to all of you. If this is your first time here or you're returning, to, uh, to all of you, welcome and good morning. As we celebrate this special day, it's really just an, an awesome opportunity in addition uh, to highlighting this class and their great work, but also to highlight the staff. And I couldn't agree more with Mr. Ball about uh, the excellent work of all of our staff, and especially I want to highlight the work of our instructor corps. As he mentioned, uh, professionals who give back, who want to give back to our industry and make sure that they share their knowledge, skills, and abilities uh, as we introduce uh, new concepts, as we refine uh, the concepts that we operate under. So I think um, if you would join me in recognizing not only these individuals here, but all of our instructor corps who are on site or working field programs, we're very fortunate to have them. So if you would join me. Well, class 272, you made it. It was a long haul, we know that. Ten weeks ago you went to these halls as individuals and you carried the title of recruit. Today you leave here carrying the title of firefighter. You've worked hard over these ten weeks. You've worked hard to get to this point. And I ask as you enjoy this day, which you should, you've worked hard, you've achieved much, and you've earned the recognition that we're giving you today, I ask you to take a deep breath, take this all in and enjoy it, but I ask you to remember a couple of things. First and foremost, be thankful. Be thankful for these family and friends who have supported you all this time to get to this point and who will support you and be with you as you go through the rest of your career. Remember that we have the benefit and be thankful for the brotherhood and sisterhood of fire service personnel. When we sign on to the fire department, we sign on to our second family that we know so well. The support that you've had getting here when you left here after a long day or after a long week, you had assignments, you wanted to practice skills, you were able to go back and work alongside of your brother and sister firefighter, many of whom are here in uniform, some not in uniform, to support you, and they've supported you so well. But remember that you'll be able to lean on all of us, your fire service family, as you go forward. Be thankful for these chiefs, for the officers in your department and your brother and sister firefighters, for their commitment to safety, their commitment to training, their commitment to working alongside of all of us. Because as you know, when you came in here, you came in as an individual. But over, especially over these last 10 weeks, you've learned the importance of teamwork. You've come together as a group. You've come together as a team that can accomplish much, that can support each other where one might show a weakness, and to leverage your strengths to bring the best benefits to those that we serve. Remember, to take care of yourselves. Maintain your shape, your conditioning, because those are important factors when we go out every day. Remember to make sure you take care of your mental health as well. We talked about that support network. Your family, your friends, they know when you return from work 
and you just have that quiet demeanor on this particular day, which is unusual. Or when you return to the station, your brothers and sisters know what you've seen, what you've encountered. We hope that you never have to see the worst, but when you do, know that you have the support network of family, friends, the brotherhood, critical incident stress opportunities. Make sure you maintain your physical health and your mental health as you go through your career. Remember to take advantage of training opportunities. Whether you return here to the fire academy, and I hope I see you many, many times, or you're on the apparatus floor refamiliarizing yourself with a piece of equipment, remember to take advantage of every opportunity. Local fire department training, community college, National Fire Academy. The old adage, you learn something new every day, isn't just a saying. It's a way of life in our business. And most importantly, remember to back each other up. Remember to, to take advantage of all the lessons you've learned and build on that foundation because tomorrow's the start of the rest of your career. But at the end, by making every day a training day and remembering those thoughts, you'll be able to go home safely at the end of a great career. Congratulations, and thank you very much. Actually, I, what I'd like to do is uh, invite Mr. Jack Delinas to the stage, and he will be presenting the Richard N. Bangs Outstanding Student Recruit Award. Richard Bangs was the chairman of the Training Council, Massachusetts Fire Training Council, for many years. This award is named in his honor. The Rehu training curriculum is designed to train and evaluate students in the basic skills of the firefighting profession. It's both a demanding course academically and hands-on. In each class, there's one student selected by the staff who has excelled in the training program. This student is named as the outstanding student of the class. The award is based on academic score, successful achievement in both practical skills, testing, and evaluations. At this time, I'd like to call up Chief Lance Benjamino up to the stage. And we are pleased to award the class outstanding student, class 272, to firefighter Richard Johnson of the Middleborough Fire Department. sign off on this? Cricket? I did? All right. So one, one, one question, all right, for 55. What did, what, what's the lesson that you learned here? Give me, give me, give me an example. Uh, teamwork. teamwork? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right? <laughs> right? How about always expect the unexpected? Yeah? You always have a plan A, plan B, plan C, D, e, and F, right? Good? So we have a tradition here, all right, with the outstanding student sings, sings a song. <laughs> sings a song to his favorite instructor. Now, we have the sheet music, we'll, we'll provide the music, all right? But we are, we are really particular to show tunes, all right? So we like the West Side Stories, right? Grant, South Pacific. Good? Are you, are you up for that? <laughs> Are you up for that? Have a clap? Have a clap? Whatever you prefer. Whatever you great. But anyway, 
I'll, I'll let you off. Right? I'll let you, because I'm up a level. Is that the right word? Benevolent. Yeah. Benevolent. All right, drill instructor. Okay, I'll let you just come back up here and say a few words. We good? All right. Being up here, uh, receiving this award, uh, is just an amazing feeling. Uh, it's been a dream of mine for a long, long time to become a, not only a firefighter, but a firefighter in my hometown of Middleborough. And uh, you know, it's something I work hard towards for many, many years. And you know, once we got here at the academy, the hard work just uh, continued on. Uh, from hitting the books, preparing myself for the exams, and along outside with the practical stations, that's just a great feeling to uh, see all this hard work pay off finally. And uh, I just got to thank my parents. Uh, I was fortunate enough to be raised by two of the greatest people I know. Uh, they've supported me through everything in life, and especially on my journey here to become a firefighter. And, uh, you know, I just I couldn't thank them enough. Um, they believed in me the whole time, and that's what great parents are right there. It's one of the many, many things that makes them so awesome. And uh, I just couldn't thank them enough. Uh, I just want to congratulate everyone from the class, too. Um, it was... It was an awesome experience being here with every single one of you. Uh, right from day one, I feel like we all got along so well. We clicked as a group. We worked together. And, uh, you know, whether it be in the books or outside, uh, we helped one another out, and there was no guy or girl left behind. And here we are. We all made it. We started day one with 36 recruits, and here we are graduating with 36. So we got our job done. I just want to wish you all um, a happy, healthy, safe career, and I hope this job's everything that you dreamed it would be. Um, you know, we got we got the greatest job in the world. I think we all know that. Uh, you know, everyone says the job goes by quick, so make sure you make the best out of each and every day. Um, never take it for granted. And good luck, guys. Thank you. That was better than the song, wasn't it? That was better than the song. <laughs> nice job. Nice job. At this time, I'd like to call upon our keynote speaker for today, Malden Assistant Chief William Sullivan. He's a 32-year veteran of the department and 13 as a chief officer. He follows his father as well as his grandfather in, the, in their grandfather's steps. They probably have about 100, over 100 years, uh, chief, of service to the city of Malden. It's outstanding. He has a bachelor's from Anna, Anna Maria College. Assistant Chief Sullivan is also an instructor here at the Massachusetts Fire Academy. He teaches strategy and tactics as well as transitional fire attack programs. He will speak to the recruits today about their commitment to the fire service. And now that, they're, and now that they are part of a, a larger thing than themselves. Whether on duty or off duty, they will always be a representative of, of your department. And always held to a higher standard because of the respect the community has for the job. Chief. Thank you, Dennis. Fire Marshal Ostrowski, Academy Director Evans, Crew Coordinator Ball, Chaplain Greer, distinguished guests, brother and sister fire officers, firefighters, and fire instructors from across the state, family and friends of the members of Class 272. I humbly thank you for inviting me to be the keynote speaker at today's recruit program graduation exercises. It's both a personal and professional honor for me to be here with you in this role. Vince Lombardi, the Hall of Fame head football coach of the three-time NFL champion Green Bay Packers, 
of the early 1960s once said, individual commitment to a group effort, that is what makes a team work, a company work, a society work, a civilization work. Speaking directly to the members of Class 272, during your time here at the Massachusetts Firefighting Academy, you've received the finest recruit firefighter training available. The fact that you're sitting here today is a testament to your ability to achieve success in the fire service through a measurable level of commitment at this early stage of your careers. It's truly an honor for me to tell you that I have worked here at the Academy with most of the instructors who have guided you through this program, each of them true fire service professionals. In fact, I know them well enough to know that no recruit who lacks a level of commitment necessary to reach this point could have slipped by any of them. So I congratulate each of you for earning the privilege to sit here. Beginning today, following this ceremony, as you return to your respective departments as probationary firefighters, make no mistake, the commitment that Coach Lombardi was describing is exactly what is going to be demanded of each of you. That's an unwavering individual commitment to an extremely vital team effort. As Coach Lombardi implied, and after 32 years in the job, I can confirm for you, that level of commitment is exactly what determines to a significant degree the level of success that a fire company will achieve at each and every incident to which it responds. When we as firefighters talk about commitment, we all realize that our first commitment is, of course, to our families. You've chosen an honorable profession with, with which to support yourselves and your families. However, with respect to commitment in the fire service, your families are beginning to realize that it works both ways. For their part, it is unquestionably their support that will assist you in reaching the full measure of commitment that becoming a good firefighter will require. So at the conclusion of this program, please make sure that you give each of your family members in attendance here today and those at home waiting for you a strong hug and a heartfelt thank you for their support over these last 10 weeks. And in addition, do so as a symbol of your deep appreciation for the support that they will continue to provide you with from this day forward. Commitment. The dictionary defines commitment in two ways. The first suggests that commitment is the state or quality of being dedicated to a cause or an activity. Ladies and gentlemen, as you should by now be aware, the cause is public safety and the associated activity is firefighting. Your commitment to this cause and activity will be readily apparent to all whom you encounter in the firehouse by your ability to integrate into the culture of your fire department. Moreover, by your willingness and enthusiasm to continue to learn, become proficient in, and unhesitatingly perform the tasks that will be assigned to you. Tasks which will run from the relatively simple to at times very complex such as ensuring that your tools and protective equipment are ready for use at the start of each tour, to attending and actively participating in training exercises within your department, as well as seeking outside training and educational opportunities such as those offered here at the Academy beyond this recruit program. It's vitally important that you remain vigilant to these duties so that you'll be prepared when called upon to function as a knowledgeable and reliable member of your assigned fire company consistent with your level of training and experience within the challenging and dynamic environment of today's fireground. If for some reason you have, haven't yet developed a strong work ethic, I urge you to do so now. Your safety, the safety of the people you will work with and that of the public whom you are sworn to protect depends on it. The second part of the definition of the term commitment is an engagement or obligation that restricts freedom of action. If you've never before in your life been part of something bigger than yourself, rest assured you are now. As a member of your fire department, you are at all times one of its most publicly visible representatives. You are now a member of an organization held in very high regard in your community. The people of your community have developed an enormous amount of respect for your department due to the public safety work that it performs within the community, as well as the valuable emergency services it provides to both residents and business owners. 
That respect didn't just show up. It was earned. That respect began to be developed long before anyone, anywhere ever heard of you. It has been earned by the firefighters and fire officers who preceded you, some of whom have made the supreme sacrifice in doing so. In fact, it is being maintained at this very moment by those working in your department today. It is your job to never do anything or fail to do something which would discredit the department they're passing on to you or tarnish the reputation it now enjoys within your community. You're now a firefighter 24 hours a day, seven days a week. Whether in uniform at work or off duty, people in your community will know who you are and who and what you represent. If you're consistently doing what you're supposed to be doing, you'll become an asset to your fire department and enhance its ability to accomplish the mission. If you're doing anything less than that, it too will show. However, it will serve only to damage what true professionals have built and severely lessen in the eyes of the public not just your own credibility, but also that of all those whom you represent, the past and present members of your department as well as the fire service as a whole. That's an enormous amount of responsibility. But I bring you back to the very seat you find yourself in today. To date, you've passed an entrance exam, a physical agility test, an oral interview, medical evaluations, and background checks. And now the recruit training program here at the Academy. At this point, all indications are that you're exactly who your respective departments were looking for. Your chief officers, your family and friends are here looking on today with hopefulness, pride, and admiration as you receive your certificates. However, thoughts of you as a new firefighter extend beyond this graduation exercise. There are experienced firefighters and company officers at firehouses across this state eagerly waiting to continue your fire service training with you and begin to impart their own firefighting knowledge and experience on you. Be prepared for that. Be open to it and immediately begin to practice what you learn from them exactly as it is shown to you when given the opportunity to do so. Remember, you only get one chance to make a first impression. And I will tell you this, that concept, it was born in a fire station. Today's a great day. It's a great day for you, your families, your departments, and your communities. I urge you to do everything in your power to make every day that follows this equally rewarding for all concerned. Continue to make your family proud. <clears throat> Excuse me. Continue to make your department and community realize that the investment they are making in you is worth it. I congratulate each of you, your families and your departments. I welcome each of you to the greatest job in the world. I wish you a long, healthy, safe, and successful career. I leave you with another quote from Coach Lombardi. Once a person has made a commitment to a way of life, they put the greatest strength in the world behind them. It's something called the power of their heart. Once a person has made this commitment, nothing will stop them short of success. Congratulations and thank you. Thank you, Chief. At this time, I'd like to call upon Recruit Assistant Program Coordinator, Jack Gelinas, to call the role of today's graduates. Family and friends, you're more than welcome to come up front and take some photographs um, when, you're, when your firefighter is uh, called. We good? Outstanding. Let's go. Before I call the roll, I'd like to ask all the veterans in the class to please stand up. All the veterans in the building, please stand up and be recognized. Thank you for your service. Thank you for your sacrifice. And now from Attleboro, Fire Chief Scott Lachance. Graduating firefighter Kelsey LeBlanc.
Graduating firefighter Eric Machowski. And co-presenting the next presentation, Attleboro firefighter Sam Walker. Who is the brother of graduating firefighter Nicholas Walker. Of Dedham, Fire Chief William Splane, graduating firefighter Paul Bouchard. <laughs> graduating firefighter Paul Lyons. Of Framingham, a fire chief Joseph Hicks. <laughs> Graduating firefighter Timothy Brennan. And assisting in the next presentation, Framingham firefighter Jared Grigg. <laughs> Who's the brother? Graduating firefighter Joshua Grigg. Assisting in the next presentation, Woburn firefighter Richard English. Graduating firefighter David Hernandez. Graduating firefighter Michael Vargas. <laughs> of Harwich, Fire Chief Norman Clark. Graduating firefighter Andrew Latino. <laughs> Graduating firefighter James Sandino.
of Kingston, the Fire Chief Mark Douglas. <laughs> Graduating Firefighter Cole Pike. Of Malden, Fire Chief Kevin Finn. And assisting in this presentation, Malden Police Officer Amanda Grenier, who is, who is the spouse of graduating firefighter Kerry Howe. And assisting in the next presentation, Malden Fire Lieutenant, retired, Daniel Toman. Who is the father of graduating firefighter Matthew Toman. Of Medway, Fire Chief Jeffrey Lynch. <laughs> Graduating firefighter Jeffrey Ward. Of Melrose, Fire Chief Edward Kalina. <laughs> and assisting in this presentation, Lexington Fire Captain Mark Ferreira. <laughs> who is the father of graduating firefighter Austin Ferreira. Of Methuen, Fire Chief Tim Sheehy. And assisting in this presentation, Methuen Firefighter Anthony Coco. Who is the brother of graduating firefighter Matthew Coco. Graduating firefighter Matthew Melville.
of Middleborough, Fire Chief Lance Benjamino. Graduating firefighter Richard Johnson III. A Peabody. Peabody Deputy Fire Chief John Osman. Graduating firefighter Sean Crocker. Graduating firefighter Jonathan Patios. And assisting in the next presentation, Peabody Police Officer, School Resource Officer, Eric Ritchie. Who is the father, graduating firefighter David Ritchie. Of Revere, Fire Chief Christopher Wright. And assisting in this presentation, United States Air Force Master Sergeant Rachel Wagner. Who is the sister of graduating firefighter Christopher Sasha. And of Somerville, Thanks. Fire Chief Charles Breen. <laughs> and assisting in this presentation, Somerville Deputy Fire Chief John Norton. <laughs> who is the cousin of graduating firefighter John Blake. Graduating firefighter John Driscoll. Graduating firefighter Rafael Flores. <laughs> Graduating firefighter Dennis Moynihan, Jr.
and assisting in the next presentation, United States Air Force retired Sergeant John Mucci. Who is the father of graduating firefighter John Mucci? of Taunton, Taunton Fire Chief Timothy Bradshaw. <laughs> Graduating firefighter David Costa. Graduating firefighter Stephen Gomes. Graduating firefighter Michael Holmes. and assisting in the next presentation of Fall River Fire Chief John Lynch. And Fall River Fire Captain Kevin Eamon. Who are the uncles graduating firefighter Mark Leandro. and assisting in the next presentation, Berkeley Fire Captain Ryan Pierce. <laughs> Graduating firefighter Matthew Pierce. And of Tewksbury, Fire Chief Michael Hazel. <laughs> Graduating firefighter Charles Lucia, Jr. Graduating firefighter Joseph Sodergren. <laughs> of Yarmouth, Fire Chief Philip Simonian. Graduating firefighter Justin Medeiros.
Recruit Class 272. Outstanding, outstanding, nice show. Thanks for all your photographs, too. All right. Now I'd like to call upon spokesman for, the spokesman for Class 272. And I swear to God, this is the first time I know this kid's name. <laughs> all right. All I know these kids is by their number. If Mr. Ball knows your name, it's not a good day. I can guarantee you it is not a good day. Is that right? That's right. All right. Outstanding. So, Mr. David Hernandez, who's the spokesman, I'd like you to come up and say a few words. Thank you. Thank you, everyone that's in attendance. Um, I'm normally not at a loss for words, but this is very emotional for me. Uh, first and foremost, I want to thank the fire marshal for setting this up. The recruit program coordinator for all your support. Uh, the MFA staff, the instructors, the people in the crib, and definitely to all of our chiefs. To our families, thank you for the years of sacrifice and understanding. We know we couldn't have done it without you. To our chiefs, thank you for selecting us <clears throat> to join your family and for entrusting the Fire Academy to further our personal conduct, morality, and professional skills. To the instructor cadre, thank you for caring about our training. It really made a difference. It's going to help us to help someone else save their lives, save ourselves, and be positive for the future. To the support staff, thank you for setting up our graduation. This wouldn't happen without you, and thank you for giving us air, which is essential for our life. <clears throat> now, what happens with me is that I get very enthusiastic, and sometimes you might not hear me, so if you can't hear me in the back, let me know, because I can move this to the side, and I'll be right there with you. All right. So to late, today we leave the Massachusetts Fire Academy as smartly disciplined, physically fit, basically trained firemen. Our respect for ourselves and the fire service has greatly increased from day zero. Ten weeks ago, 36 of us arrived at this location in this room. You could be amazed with the things that they have you do in this room. We were asked why we, were cho we chose to join the fire service. Our answers unknowingly echoed the importance of honor, duty, and sacrifice. And then we had PT. Some of us loved the towers. <laughs> Some of us preferred lectures. Hydraulics seemed like Latin. I speak Spanish, so I would know. Add numbers, I was really confused. But luckily, I had this wonderful bunch of people, and they helped me get through it. Then they threw into knots. With the knots, we were completely twisted. We had to learn a lot. Week two and week three had us wishing the weather went our way because we came in on a Saturday, and you could expect what happens on a Saturday. Your weekend is shorter, you're back to it. We had a lot to learn. The instructors led us to the engines and the ladders. We told each other to check your piece. Check your piece. We had, uh, we had each other's backs, because we, had this, we all had the same interests here, which became abundantly clear as the time went by. We are unfinished versions of ourselves, and we have merely scratched the surface. But rest assured, the class of 272 are diamonds within the rust. I wish you the best, and thank you for your attendance. At this time, I would like to call up Matthew Kokos. Uh, he was the originator of this plaque. Uh, 
and it's cocoa, not cocoa, so I was just carried away. Please stand, stand for the benediction by Chaplain Eric Greer. Let's pray. We humbly ask, Almighty God, that you'll continue to bless all of us with your presence and your guidance. We ask your special blessing on all these graduates beginning the new chapter in their lives. And God of grace, watch over all who answer the call of the alarm that we might work with diligence and honor. Make us brave and determined. Guide us in the dark of night and in the dense smoke and help those who call upon us for assistance. Keep us safe. Keep us strong in body and mind and in spirit. And guide us always in the path of your peace. In your most holy name we pray. Amen. Ladies and gentlemen, this concludes today's ceremonies. On behalf of State Fire Marshal Peter Ostrowski and the men and women of the Department of Fire Services, I'd like to thank you for joining us today on this very, very special occasion. We wish each member of Class 272 the best in their careers. Congratulations, guys. So I ask that you would I ask you if you remain standing for the departure of the official party, followed by the chiefs of the department, followed by the class 272, led out by Lieutenant Mazzola. Congratulations. Thank you very much.